hands wherever you are. Lift your hands wherever you are. And I want you in the next 60 seconds to ask the Lord for a visitation tonight. You are in His presence. You are in His presence. Ask Him for something tonight. Talk to Him. Let it be a release. Let grace be released. Ask Him for something. Ask Him to do something tonight. And let His name be glorified. that you make the presence of Jesus real in this place real to every heart real to every life real that our eyes can see and let your name be glorified touch us with your power set us loose Set us at liberty. Give us an expression that only you can. And let the name of the Lord be glorified. Just be still everywhere, eyes closed. Don't sing, don't pray, just be still. Just reverence him with your stillness. He's a person. He's more than fire. Yes, when he manifests, it can be like fire. Sometimes when he manifests, he comes with overwhelming power. But he's more than the manifestations. He's a person. His name is called the Holy Spirit. He's the one sent by Jesus to reveal the Father. Just be still as you become aware of his presence. I 
your hands to him. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Eyes closed everywhere. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Just focus on him. Don't be distracted. standing before you. The elders and angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And holy, holy, holy are the 
elders and angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, the elders and angels bow. Worship you now, holy, 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 yeah. you Lord. Now sing in your part softly, just softly. The elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship you, redeemed worship you. and angels bow the elders and angels bow the redeemed worship you now the redeemed worship you now sing it holy 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 are you are the elders and angels Worship you now. Lift your voice, everybody, and let's be glad to him.
just worshiping to get his presence no we are worshiping because he's here 
This is the automatic response when his presence comes. We are not worshipping to bring his presence. His presence is here already. He's here. This is not a work of emotion. He's here and he's real. Lift your two hands. You have lift your two hands to heaven and sing to him.
Lord, indeed, you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be exalted. Higher than the gods of the earth. For God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. That in the name Jesus, every knee must bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you just wave your hands to him in reverence? Please be seated briefly in the presence of God. everybody tonight to Neumatech and I believe God that we will have nothing short of an experience in his presence just give me the next few minutes to do a very brief teaching and then we will stand up and just worship the Lord and pray trust him for what he has already begun to do and what he will yet do in our lives. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. The fellowship of the Spirit. That's the topic tonight. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. I assure you, just give me a few minutes. Let the word of God come to build our understanding to a common level. And then we'll allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do.
Now just to correct something briefly before we continue. I know many of us saw the ministration of spirituality. And in as much as that was a play that was staged, so we can understand and identify with the workings of the Holy Spirit amongst His people. Because sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes, when His presence is revealed in a place, the emotions of people can be stirred up. And our reactions differ based on the level of the connection to our emotions. Please listen. However, for those of us who may not be used to that kind of manifestation, it doesn't mean that is just an emotional display. Truly, when the Holy Spirit comes, sometimes it can be very heavy. So while that was a play that was staged, I want you to know that whatever will happen tonight, in case that happens, don't think it is still another acting. It is the real presence of God. And the Lord will be glorified. Just leave her. Just leave her. She will calm down. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. Please give me New King James. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And everybody say, Amen. I want my emphasis on the communion of the Holy Spirit. The word communion there can be replaced with the word fellowship. Paul is praying a prayer desperately from his heart. Above everything that he wanted this church to know, to have and to experience, his greatest desire was that they will come into the experience of communion, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And he says that he will abide with you forever. First of all, before we talk about the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and what it means to commune, to fellowship with him, just for the purpose of some of us who may not know, we need to do a little discourse on the Holy Spirit. We need to talk a little about him so that everybody can know who he is. Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? All right, watch this now. Holy Spirit, please let her keep quiet so that she, we can listen. Let your peace rest upon her and let her be quiet so we can all listen. Thank you. All right. So who is the Holy Spirit? Number one, the Spirit of God is the life of God. The life of men is in their blood. The life of animals, all flesh is in their blood the blood is a fluid that contains nutrients oxygen and all the necessary requirements for the nourishment of the body of an individual anybody without blood is dead just the way the blood is the life of flesh so also the life of god is his spirit and that is the reason why god is separate and distinct from every other being in the universe number two who is the holy spirit he is the force and power of creation please make sure you're not distracted he is the force and power of creation 
nothing would have happened as far as the creation of the earth and the heavens are concerned without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Job chapter 26 verse 13, it says by his spirit he adorned the heavens. Genesis chapter 1 gives us the creation story. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. No shape, empty, dark earth, nothing to write home about. But then the Bible says at the end of verse 2 that the Spirit of God moved upon the surface of the waters. And after that God began to create. Now we understand that God created, oh His presence is strong in this place. We understand that God created everything we see through His Word. But it is important to know that without the move of the Holy Spirit, the Word would have been of no effect. The reason why a prophecy or a word will come to pass is not because of who said it. It is because it is spoken in the atmosphere where the Spirit of God has moved. You want to see your words come to pass. You want to see your word carry life and the ability to impact. Then do it when the Spirit of God has moved. When He moves, He supplies life for creation. He is the force and the power of creation. The Psalms 104 verse 30, I've been meditating on this scripture all through this week. From verse 29, it says, You withdraw your spirits, you hide your face and they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. But look at verse 30, you send forth your spirits and what happens? They are created and you renew the face of the earth. You want to see the creative power of God come alive, then let it happen when the Spirit of God is present. Because He's the force and the life of creation. The Bible says even in the creation of man, in Genesis 2 verse 7, And God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became, man became, there is no becoming without the Holy Spirit. You ask people, what do you want to become in future? 80 to 90 percent of them, what they will mention is their ambition. But I'd like you to know if you must become who God wants you to become and fulfill destiny, it cannot happen outside of the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the force and power of creation. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is the one who reveals the presence of the Father and the Son. <laughs> he reveals the presence of the Father and the Son. Now watch this. In the Old Testament, there was no Son of God. Yes, I know you read Genesis chapter 6, where the Bible says the sons of God. The word sons of God there is the word Elohim. Elohim is actually a Hebrew word that is used to describe celestial spirits. You know, the English language is not as heavy as the Hebrew language. The Hebrew language is perhaps the heaviest language on earth. One Hebrew word can mean nine English words. It is a nine-dimensional language. So it uses Elohim as a family name for all celestial spirits, God, angels, what have you. So the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 is not talking about the son of God. He was talking about angels who had fallen, fallen angels. But in the Old Testament, there is God the Father, but there is no God the Son. And there is God the Holy Spirit. What you have in the Old Testament is God the Father, God the Word, and God the Spirit. 
The reason is because it was in the New Testament that the Word became flesh. That transition happened by the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who translated the Word from heaven and made Him the Son in earthly body. That's why I said He reveals the Father and the Son. Without the Holy Spirit, Jesus will never become the Son of God. Now for those of you who are already lost by what I'm saying, 1 John chapter 5, give me that verse that says there, is, there are three that bears witness in heaven. And then there are three that bear witness on earth. 1 John chapter 5, give me the verse, it's, on, it's in 1 John chapter 5, I think verse 12 or 13 thereabouts. Okay, 7. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. This was, this was before the Word became flesh. Go on, next verse. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. What does the water and the blood mean? Very simple. Blood is the life of flesh. When Jesus became a man, he had blood in him. And the Bible says, except a man be born again. Born of water and of the Spirit. It means that you have to experience natural birth first. You have to be a man before you can encounter the new birth of the Spirit. Except the man be born of water. The environment of the womb is water, isn't it? Talk to me, isn't it? The environment of the womb is water, fluid. Except a man be born of water, natural birth first. And that is what gives him the license to experience the birth of the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. So substitute it in this verse. There are three that bear witness on earth now. The Spirit... The water and the blood. The water and the blood there is symbolic of Jesus. Because he came in flesh and he was born like a man. And then at the baptism of John, the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon him. That's the reason why I said that the, the Son of God was not revealed in the Old Testament. He was revealed in the New Testament. So the Holy Spirit reveals both the Father and the Son. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the one who made the Word the Son of God. I've said that to you. He's the one who made the Word the Son of God. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's the one who is called the Spirit of Life. He is the Spirit of Life. The force of life. The reality of life. Romans 8 from verse 1 and 2, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of life. Listen, the Holy Spirit does not give life. The Holy Spirit does not carry life. He is life. Verse 10 of Romans chapter 8. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is what? Did he say the spirit has life? The spirit is what? Life. In him was life. Why? Because the spirit of God was in Jesus. So when you carry the Holy Spirit, you carry life. That's why when I pray for people to be healed, I don't care the name of the sickness. I'm transmitting life to them. Life means absence of anything that has death. Sickness is death. Poverty is death. Depression is death. Anything that impedes your existence and advancement as a human being is death. But the spirits is life who is the Holy Spirit is the one who inspired the word is the one who inspired the word 
2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. You see, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. The word inspiration there in the Greek, it means the breath of God. The breath. The same breath that was breathed into the nostrils of man and he became a living soul. The same breath that breathed upon the dry bones in Ezekiel 37 is the same one who breathed upon natural men and they were inspired and they wrote the word of God. The Bible is the only complete and accurate book in the whole universe. Till tomorrow it cannot be faulted even by history. Different men, different dispensation. Some of them never saw the other. But they were able to write with sequence whether they were educated or not. Why? Because they were being controlled by one spirit. Somebody say the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, that amongst many is who the Holy Spirit is. What does the Holy Spirit do when he comes upon a man? Or when he comes into the life of a man? He brings supernatural intelligence. He brings supernatural intelligence. Job 32 verse 5, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration, the breath of the Almighty. Give us that verse in Amplified. Job 32 verse 5 in Amplified. The Holy Spirit brings supernatural intelligence. He expands the ability of your mind. He gives you an intelligence that is as though you are learned. Job 32 verse 5. Or is it verse, what's the verse now? Is it verse 7? Verse 8. I beg your pardon. In Amplified. But there is a vital force, a spirit of intelligence in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives man understanding. This is what it means. Listen. Listen, let me explain this verse. There is a spirit in a man. And the presence of that spirit in that man gives him supernatural and uncommon intelligence. And this is what the intelligence will do. That through that man, the breath of God is released to his environment, to other men. And they can receive understanding. Because when you talk, you release air. The breath of God. When you talk, you release air. So there is a spirit in man. And because there is the spirit of God in that man, as he speaks, his breath is from the Almighty. Because the spirit in him is the spirit of God. And as he speaks, his words are capable of impacting understanding. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that the understanding comes from God. No. There is a spirit in a man. And when he speaks, he imparts understanding. Because his breath becomes the breath of God. So if you are a lecturer here, no student under you is permitted to fail. Because there is a spirit, a vital force... A spirit of intelligence in you and when you stand it doesn't matter whether you are teaching chemistry or mathematics the breath so that even somebody who has been dull all their life sit under you for five minutes and their brains are open why the breath of the Almighty that comes from you because God cannot breathe on the earth no You don't understand? God never breathed on the earth physically. God is spirit. If he were to breathe on the earth, the earth will not be able to interact with it. You know what God told me when I sat here? The Lord said, it is important for them to admire when my word is spoken through a man. I said, Lord, why? He said, it's not because that man should be glorified. But it's because if I should speak from my realm, my voice will be thunder and it can bring destruction but when a man speaks because he carries my spirit his word will bring creation so god cannot breathe on earth no all he does is comes into a man there is a spirit in man put your hands on your chest and say there is a spirit in me there is a life at work in me 
there is a force of supernatural intelligence that is at work in me that means you can't fail an exam after this revelation that means you no longer pray for exams again if Jesus was to write an exam now if Jesus was to be on earth and he writes an exam now will you pray for him to pass now what is the difference between Jesus when he was on earth and you no difference the Spirit of God that made him Jesus the Son of God is the spirit that is at work in you it's the spirit that has made you a son of God so there are things we no longer should be praying for you say but apostle I know that you know that but it's time for you to be conscious of that when the Spirit of God comes in the life of a man he brings supernatural intelligence he brings favor Luke chapter 1 verse 28 and verse 30 the angel told Mary he say you are highly favored why because the Spirit of God had come upon her so you don't need to pray for favor when you carry the Spirit of God when the Spirit of God comes in the life of a man what does he do he brings power Micah chapter 3 verse 8 I am full of power as of the Spirit of God and of justice 3 verse 8 I am full of power and of the Spirit of God and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin this was the mystery of John the Baptist John the Baptist never preached any good sermon repent you brood of vipers you snakes there was nothing sweet in that sermon but the Bible says the whole of Israel came to him you know why he knew that he was full of power and of the Spirit of God and because of that he had the ability to declare to Jacob his transgression when the Spirit of God comes in the life of a man he comes as the Spirit of grace that helps us to offer up prayers and supplications according to the will of God he comes as the Spirit of grace the Bible calls him the Spirit of grace in Zechariah 12 verse 10 grace is the divine ability at work in the life of a man grace is the system of God that converts the weakness of a man to the power of God grace is the economy of the kingdom of God made available for every believer grace is the power upgrade of God upon a man that makes the man function in the God class whatever you call it that's grace he is called the spirit of grace so when he is in you he gives you that ability he elevates you to the God class you begin to you begin to function as God he said for I have said ye are gods in John chapter 10 he said if he called them gods to whom the scriptures came to and the scriptures cannot be broken and then he gives you the ability to pray and render supplications according to the will of God how many of you would like to pray the will of God every time you pray the will of God is the mind of God what God wants what God wills that means that if I can say anything I say in prayers that is exactly what God wants is as good as done isn't it how many of you want to pray that kind of prayer it means you will, you will get 100% answer it, when the Spirit of God comes the Bible says in Romans 8 26 verse 27 for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the Spirit make it intercession even times when you cannot pray he makes the intercession for you he said for he that such at the heart verse 27 knows the mind of the Spirit for he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God somebody say the Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace that helps us to offer up prayers and supplication now that we know who the Holy Spirit is let's look at the word fellowship second Corinthians 13 verse 14 where we read 
He said the fellowship, the communion of the Spirit. That word communion or fellowship in the Greek, it means to share together. It means to participate. It means, it literally means to have intercourse. It's like when a man meets a woman. That's exactly what it means. So when he says the communion of the Spirit, it means a common union where you and the Holy Spirit become one. For a long time, we have known the Holy Spirit as fire. For some of us, we have known Him as wind. For some of us, our knowledge of Him is attributed to the manifestations of His presence. But I like you to know that above all of those things, He is a person. Fire cannot talk. Wind cannot relate. But a person can interact, can relate, can speak. And it is time for us to know the Holy Spirit as a person. The fellowship, the communion. That you and the Holy Spirit become one. You come to a point where you begin to have a common sharing. You come to a point where you begin to participate together. It's also called partnership. That the Holy Spirit is depending on you as you are depending on the Holy Spirit. So that Christ can be revealed. Partnership. That means from that point, it takes you and God to see a miracle. It's not only God. Did you hear what I said? Participation. A singer sang a song. What's that song? Some, from something to partnership. I don't know the song, but from fellowship to partnership. So you have to come to a point of fellowship, interacting with him getting to know him as a person getting to know how he walks how he speaks getting to identify his voice from other voices getting to know when he walks into a place and when he walks out getting to realize that we can be a service and a lot of people have their emotions hyped but he's not there getting to be so sure that he's walking with you and you walk boldly and majestically to your office. Getting to know that he's so much with you that sickness cannot stand in your body. That's what fellowship is. There is a level you can get to in your knowing the Holy Spirit as a person. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come. Sweet Spirit, we pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own special way. So you can know him as a person. And I tell you, when you know the Holy Spirit as a person, you will suck all your besties. And you make him your bestie. He is a person you can trust. Even when you are unfaithful to him, he will remain faithful. That's what the Bible says. That even when we are unfaithful, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. He may not be able to trust you, but you can trust him. He can teach you ministry. He can teach you about the anointing. He can teach you about the power of God. He can tell you what is in the mind of people. He can speak to you while you are drinking coffee in the morning. He doesn't always speak when you are in your closet. Many of you don't know that the Holy Spirit wants to be a part of your everyday life. He doesn't want you to just reduce him to when you go to pray. No, he wants to be there when you sip coffee. I heard the story about a great father of faith in this nation. I don't know how true it is, but I heard the story. I believe it should be true. Of Daddy Adeboye, our father in the faith. That he was to have, I don't know if it's breakfast one time or so. But there was tea, he and his wife. And when they were about to eat, he prayed. He said, Lord, come and eat with us as we eat. Amen. Now, it was said in the story that the jug containing the tea 
was able to fill at least three cups. So he poured some in the cup of his wife and he poured some in his cup. Filled up. And they drank. And he hurriedly drank his own so that he can take an extra portion. And when he took the jug to refill, he saw that it was empty. So while he was shaking his surprise, the Holy Spirit spoke gently to him. I thought you said I should join you. True story I heard. I can't tell you many times I have asked him to change the weather and he has done it. I say, Lord, I'm on a retreat today, so let rain fall so that there will be cold. In Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, the clouds change. Sometimes I can be in a meeting as I'm preaching like this. And I can talk to him and say, I want to know what is in that person's heart. And he will tell me. Sometimes I can be in my room days before Sunday. And he will show me a vision of the meeting. Sometimes I can even be confused. Which clothes will I wear? He will say, wear this one. I said something to them today when I came. I had planned to wear a suit. But the vision the Holy Spirit showed me was what I was wearing. But I stubbornly wanted to wear a suit because it was a new suit. And then somehow it didn't work out. So I wore my clothes and came. As soon as I entered, I saw them wearing native. So I just, before I started, I held him. I said, thank God I wore this clothes. Thank God I heard the Holy Spirit. That is how real. This is not gimmicks. That is how real it can be. He can be more real to you than your clothes. What is my confidence when I come and we have a miracle service? One thing, I know he is with me. And because he is with me, there will be miracles. Friends, we need to know the Holy Spirit. We need to fellowship with him. John chapter 14 verse 16 to 18. Jesus made a promise to us about the Holy Spirit. Three primary experiences that we will have with the Holy Spirit when He comes into our lives. These were experiences that Jesus should have had with us if He was on earth. Because at this time Jesus was about to depart. And so He told them, in, in place of me, you will have these experiences with the Holy Spirit. Verse 16, first of all. And I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him for He dwells with you and He will abide and He will be in you. The first experience is that when He comes, He abides with us. He stays with you. He doesn't come and go. You come to church today now, but you definitely will leave after the service and go. And you may not come again till next Sunday. But that's not how the Holy Spirit does with us. When He comes, He abides with us. He stays with you even when you don't acknowledge Him. He's there. He's patient enough to wait till you acknowledge Him. Number two experience, verse 26. Verse 26 of John 14. The second experience when he comes but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that i said to you the second experience is that he will teach you all things first experience he comes and he abides with you you know sometimes we need the assurance of his presence isn't it sometimes you need to know he is there with you that's the reason why most of us pray before we enter an exam hall. That's the reason why we pray before we enter, we, we enter an interview. The reason why many of us pray when we are tested mostly is just to have an assurance that He is with us. For though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. We know that when He is with us, we can go through anything. But the second experience is that when he comes, he teaches us all things. All things means all things. Tell your neighbor all things. The Holy Spirit does not only teach the Bible. He teaches all things. 
mathematics, chemistry, physics, medicine, law, geography, sciences, oil and gas. He teaches everything. You've not been asking him, that's why you don't know. He can teach you tailoring. Can I tell you something? I never went to a formal music school to learn how to play keyboard. I was a drummer. He taught me. I remember years ago then, my elder brother in our local church, many years ago, he was a keyboardist. So he got an admission, flew out of the country to study. And there was nobody to play the keyboard. I only know how to play three chords. And then I will never forget that Sunday service. The first Sunday service of him not being around, I made a mess of myself. They were singing him. I was just playing another thing. Not because that was what I wanted to play, but that was all I knew. I was helpless. And you know, when you are a beginner learning this keyboard, you, your hands are not too full. You don't spread your hands. You just stay on one spot. And I remember our assistant pastor came and blasted me that day. And I stood there with tears in my eyes. After that service, true story, 2011, I took the keyboard into my room. And I slept with that keyboard for two years. And the Holy Ghost from nowhere taught me. I will sit down and it will interpret the sound from a music for me. Nobody showed me this is this chord, that is that chord. I just knew it. And then the rejected stone became the chief cornerstone. A time came when I was to go to school, they started crying. They said, who will play for us now? Somebody said, the Holy Spirit. There is a man named Joshua Mills. Browse about him. He's a musician. He operates under a mighty atmosphere of the glory. It is said that he can be playing the keyboard, singing, and literal oil will come out of his hands. You know why? Not because he's so powerful, but it's because of what has made him powerful. His relationship with the Holy Spirit. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. Don't worry, just let me sing. I worship you. You are here. Touching every life, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, rearranging destinies. That's what he's doing. I worship you. I worship you. Listen, did you enjoy that song? Do you enjoy that song anytime it is sung? It was because it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. That was not the product of a person's intelligence. Somebody knew the Holy Spirit and related with him. And he passed that song to her. And the song has made her top charts. The things that men crave for. Just a simple walk with the Holy Spirit will, come, will bring it to you on the platter of gold. He knows the idea to give you while you are worshipping Him in your secret place. And that idea makes you the next dangote of this nation. Yes. It's no big deal to Him. He's the blesser looking for who to bless. You don't even need to ask Him to bless you. You just need to befriend Him. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You see the way I'm holding him like this? You can, hold, you can be like this with the Holy Spirit. It's possible. Please sit down, sir. Thank you. A woman called Catherine Coleman of blessed memory. Church history tells us that she became so close to the Holy Spirit. A time came where they had to devise a secret route for her from the airport to the airport rather. If she comes into a city to come and preach, she doesn't go to the airport or come from the airport through the normal route. They had to create another route. Because if she follows any route, everybody must come under the influence of her atmosphere with the Holy Spirit. And it was such that you cannot stand. That means there will be a lot of accidents. 
one time she was in a meeting and the power of God was so strong and she had to rush to catch her flight so they smuggled her through the kitchen it was in a hotel they struggled her through the back door they said the shortest route out of the building was through the kitchen because the main building was too full just smuggle out through the kitchen while the cooks were busy cooking and washing plates and as soon as she entered into the kitchen the story had it that everybody went down under the power of the spirit for one hour cooking suspended no dinner I pity anybody who had made an order at that time not ministration no. smuggling to go and catch a flight the question I have now is why are we not seeing men with this level of relationship with the Holy Spirit why do we not see we have a lot of noisemakers even in church when was the last time you felt raw genuine power when was the last time you entered a place and you sensed the presence of God not because people were shouting or crying but probably because what was on you that was heavy was lifted when was the last time we heard people minister and it doesn't matter how they sing or what they sing there was a flow of the anointing the reason why we may not be seeing that in our time is simple maybe we don't have too many people that have built that kind of relationship with the Holy Spirit because he only show up for his friends the fellowship of the Spirit and this is where I bring the teaching to the close actually this is the main point of the teaching for you to experience fellowship and oneness and communion with the Holy Spirit first of all there are two things two extremes you must avoid that the Bible tells us we need to talk about it this night so that many of us who may have ventured into it may be delivered from it for you to walk with the Holy Spirit there are two extremes that you must avoid the first extreme is in first Thessalonians 5 verse 19 to 20 he said quench not the spirits the second extreme is in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 he said and grieve not the Holy Spirit so the first one is what quench not the second one is what grieve not come on talk to me the first one is what quench not the second one is what grieve not let's talk about grief next week we'll talk about quench not Ephesians 4 verse 30 and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption what does it mean to grieve to grieve means to hurt someone to cause pain to cause distress or sorrow to somebody that's not what any one of us wants isn't it But you will not believe that every day there are a lot of believers that keep grieving the Holy Spirit. And that's the reason why we cannot have a stable walk and relationship with the Holy Spirit. Am I talking to somebody here? Grieve not. Grieve not. You know the Holy Spirit is so gentle. That's why one of the euphemisms used in scripture to describe him is the dove. A dove is so gentle that any slight distortion around it, it will fly off. That means as quick as the Holy Spirit comes, he can quickly leave. He can quickly leave the life of a person. He can quickly leave a service. He can quickly leave a business. He can quickly leave a ministry. Why? When he is grieved. The Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption. How do we grieve the Spirit of God? I'll show you four things and we'll pray. Go to the next verse. How do we grieve the Spirit of God? We need to know it so that we can avoid it. The first way by which men can grieve the Holy Spirit 
is when they are comfortable with secret sins. Somebody say secret sins. Come on, say it again. Secret sins. Look at this verse 31. Let all bitterness. Let's read it on the screen. At the count of three. One, two, three. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now, the reason why this is written in this verse is because it is explanative of the last verse. The last verse says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit, with which you were sealed unto redemption. How? This verse came. Verse 31. It says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor. Do you realize, and malice, do you realize that all of these things are things that are stationed in the heart of a person? Number one, bitterness is in the heart. Now this is where you need to pay attention. Bitterness. Nobody even knows that you are bitter at that person. To have a bad feeling. Hatred towards a person. Maybe because of anything they have done. But you are not sitting in your heart. And because in the, it's in your heart, the Holy Spirit is grieved. You know why? That's where he dwells. The person doesn't know you are bitter at him. But the Holy Spirit knows. Because you have made his home uncomfortable. Your heart. That's why I like that song. I will make my heart your dwelling place. I will build your throne in my heart. Come, Father, come, Son. This is not a song for unbelievers oh this is a song i sing every day when i lie down in my room before him on my carpet that's the song i sing come on every day our hearts can sometimes become filthy with all kinds of things bitterness wrath anger don't say it's nothing it says when you entertain these things you grieve and I told you what grieving means. It means to cause pain, to cause distress, to cause sorrow. How many of you want to live in sorrow? But that's what we make the Holy Spirit go through when we entertain these things. What is in you that what is in that person you cannot forgive? Even malice of all. I think malice is one of the most dangerous sins. All sins are the same, but I fear the sin of malice. Anytime I begin to entertain malice then It's like the heavens are closed I don't hear God again It's blocked If I open the Bible I'm seeing pages So I made a vow That no, no, no kind of offense No kind of offense No matter how painful it is I will cry there When I cry out the pain That's all But malice will never It's, it's like a dark cloud and there are people in church that can go with malice over one person over one small issue they share food they didn't give me she passed my role she went to the next one and for one whole year malice don't laugh how about between husband and wife you ask your husband to buy you a bag he didn't buy not because he didn't want to but probably because there was no money at that time but you feel that he has money for other things for himself but he will not buy you a bag and because of that a wife can keep malice i'm telling you and you know it's so it's so much a thing of the heart that we can come here and lift up holy hands in quotes 
But when you lift up those hands, it's the heart. The Holy Spirit is standing and he's telling another member. He said he has chased me out of his heart for one week now. How many of you would like to be chased out of your house by your landlord? No quick notice, they just come and throw you out. That's what happens when we entertain those things. Malice, bitterness. Some of us may need to, with all due respect, repent this night. Look at the next verse, verse 32. He said, let all these things be put away from you. And be kind to one another. Tender hearted, because this is the heart that accommodates the Holy Spirit. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. Can I tell you something? The enemy is trying to destroy tomorrow's voices. Listen to this. The enemy is trying to destroy tomorrow's public voices with today's private sins. Let me say it again. The enemy is trying to destroy tomorrow's public voices with today's private sins. Some of us that God will use mightily in the future. The enemy is trying to destroy that future with secret sins of the heart today. But tonight God will purge us. Number two. How do we grieve the Holy Spirit? Number two. Through murmuring and complaining. Isaiah 63 verse 9 to 10. Through murmuring and complaining. The Holy Spirit is grieved when we murmur and complain. In all the affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence, that's the Holy Spirit there. The Old Testament refers to him as the angel of his presence. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and he bore them, not because they were righteous. Why? In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bore them and carried them all the days of old. But look at verse 10. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. How did they do it? They did it by complaining and murmuring. All through in the wilderness. Exodus 15 verse 24. They started to complain. Why? There was, the, the water was bitter. They began to complain. God is mad at complaining and murmuring. Complaining and murmuring makes a man a nuisance in the ears of God. Why complain when you can pray? And many of us say, oh, but I don't complain. We are not talking about physically just yet. We are also talking about the heart. Sometimes when a promise or a blessing is taking too long to be fulfilled, we begin to murmur. We begin to complain. The Bible says they grief the Holy Spirit because they complain. And they murmur. Numbers 14.11 God became so mad at their complainants. 14.11 Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? So to God, complaining and murmuring is what? Rejecting God. He said, but apostle, the situation is too difficult. I'm tired. Praise. If the situation is too difficult for you, what do you do? Praise. Let your complaining be converted to praise and thanksgiving. The reason is because your situations are surrounded by his goodness and not the other way around. Regardless of your situation, he's still good. Are you hearing me? Your cousin died yesterday, he is still good. Next month, your grandma in the village died, he's still good. Tomorrow you woke up and saw that they had defrauded you, he's still good. He's still good in the midst of that, yes. The reason is because if he's still good and he doesn't change, that means whatever that situation is, it will definitely change and conform to the way God wants it to be. For we know that all things work together to the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose, not to the good of them that complain and murmur. So complaining and murmuring is one of the ways by which we grieve the Holy Spirit. Number three, unbelief. Is somebody getting blessed? Unbelief. 
Unbelief. Psalm 78, verse 40 to 42. Unbelief. Doubt grieves the Holy Spirit. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Next verse tells you how. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Let me tell you how they limited him. Look at verse 17 there. The same chapter, verse 17. This is how they limited him. But they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. Go on. And they tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. Go on to verse 20. Yes, they spoke against God. This is how they limited God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? This is a common man. A human being whose breath is in his nostrils. is talking to the almighty creator. The creation is talking to the, the one who created him. Can God prepare a table in the wilderness next verse behold this one this is what even made me mad behold they are still talking oh. behold he struck the rock so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed isn't that enough miracle for you to know he can still do something today they were the ones who said it oh. but look at what they said next can he give bread also now you don't you don't you criticize them because many of us live like that instead of you to be grateful for what God did yesterday you are already complaining about the problem today as though he didn't do something yesterday hello talk to me are we here can you imagine they convince themselves yes we know he can bring water out of the rock but in this case of food no no God doesn't understand science he doesn't understand physics and Every time you entertain unbelief, that's what you do. The Bible says they grieved him. You know what? One time God became so mad. God said, okay, because of your unbelief, you say you want meat, but I will give you so much meat you will eat till it comes out of your nose. How many of you, when you were small, you cry for food? And your, your, your mother got annoyed. I don't know how many of you have been punished like that. They now fetch the food. And filled a mighty bowl and said, You must finish everything today. How many of you have been there? You don't want to raise your hand. I've been there before. That was what God, God became so mad. That's what He did to them. He said, Okay, since your unbelief is too much, eh, I will give you enough meat to eat till it comes out of your nose. May God not bless you like that. May God not bless you out of annoyance. God promoted you. Okay, now it's time for your promotion, but they are fighting you. If he did it before, did he borrow the power? Is he signing for it? Does he rent it? Has his license expired? No. Unbelief. And then number four. I said this, I will close. This afternoon when I was praying, I thought I was done with the message. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I should mention this point. And this is the point. The fourth way by which we grieve the Holy Spirit. Disregard and disrespect for authority. The Holy Spirit spoke to me himself. He said, say this one too. This is how we grieve the Holy Spirit. Disregard and disrespect for authority. Psalms 106 verse 32 to 33 When we ignore or despise the authority that God has placed over us We grieve the Holy Spirit I remember when you grieve the Holy Spirit He leaves, isn't it? When we take for granted the structure or the systems of authority God has placed on us We grieve the Holy Spirit They angered Him also at the waters of strife so that it went ill with Moses on account of them because they rebelled against his spirit so that he spoke rashly with his lips they rebelled against Moses and because of that the Holy Spirit was angry Numbers chapter 12 the Bible told us about Miriam and Aaron they became annoyed 
rather envious because God speaks to Moses. And the Bible says God was angry with them. When we listen to me, when we disregard and disrespect the authority that God has instituted at any time, in any place, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And when we grieve the Holy Spirit, He departs. The psalmist said, cast me not away from your presence, nor take your Holy Spirit from me. Remember, I told you the Spirit of God is the Spirit of life. When the Holy Spirit leaves because He's grieved, what has gone? Life. And the absence of life is what? Death. Everything shuts down. And we disregard and disrespect authority in church. How about a husband and a wife? The man is the head of the home. Yes, you pray more than him. But he's still the head. He said, hey, but apostle, I don't argue with him. But you are always insisting and imposing your decisions. And he doesn't want to offend you because he feels you are more spiritual. You have made him feel you are the most spiritual. So you have become the head. From the neck, you became the head. Can I go on? Disregard and disrespect of authority. How about manipulating him? Can I tell you something about manipulation? Anything you get, I'm talking to women now. You know why I'm talking to women first? Because you and the Holy Ghost are used in comparison, isn't it? The Holy Spirit is the helper. You are a helper. When the helper now becomes the one in charge. Manipulation too is a way. Let me tell you. It's a way. There are some ladies, and I've noticed this thing. You see a young man who is not born again. You know he's not born again. But the lady is comfortable to get married to him. You know why? Because at that time, anything she wants and she tells him, he will do. So she feels it's like a toy to her. And you know, some women like that. They just need somebody that if they tell anything, he will do. He will not stress me. Yes or no? If you don't answer, I know I'm saying the truth. I know I'm preaching good. You may not like it, but I know I'm talking the truth. So they will marry him not because he is born again or, or, or the other qualities, but because they can manipulate him. Can I tell you something, young lady? Be ready because anything you get by manipulation, you will sustain by manipulation. And you are being transformed to become a witch very soon. Yes, because witchcraft is manipulation and control. Oh, I'm talking to somebody this evening. No, continue. Continue. Keep manipulating. Your stomach is not paying you. You say, you just sit down. Continue. Gradually, you will, two things will happen. One day, he will get fed up. Because man was created to dominate. Wait. That is God's structure. And I'm coming to the men. So we'll not say, men, are you saying the man should be tyrant? No. You are, you are robbing him of his original built up. One day, that spirit will react. And you will not like the way it will react. Or, he will gradually become a puppet in your hand. And you will not know when you, are, you have become a Jezebel, a witch. That was how Jezebel led Ahab to cause Israel to sin. For you to know that Ahab really didn't want to offend God. The Bible says, when, he, when Naboth was killed by Jezebel, Elijah went to Ahab and released God's judgment. The Bible says Ahab tore his clothes, wore sackcloth, put ashes, and he repented before God. That is to tell you that the man originally didn't want to sin against God, but a witch called Jezebel. You don't have to go to a, a Babalao's house to be a witch. When you want to leave manipulating others, a boss, you want to manipulate the people under you. I'm telling you, and that's church witchcraft. We think witchcraft is about blowing powder, making incantation. Disregard and disrespect for authority grieves the Holy Spirit. Continue like that as a woman. The day you pray and the Holy Spirit hears you, eh? come and tell me, I'll drop my office as an apostle. I've discovered that any most of the women that walk powerfully with God check their submission to their husband. 
and most women that encounter all kinds of attacks that they don't understand go and ask first how is their submission to their husband i'm not just talking physically heart because when the spirit of god is not there because you have grieved him by disregarding authority an evil spirit will come the bible says and the evil spirit uh, the, the holy spirit left saw and an evil spirit because there's no vacuum so the woman she doesn't sleep in the night she has fibro here she has this growth here she has all kinds of attack go and check her level of submission but show me a woman that understands true submission same thing with the men too the bible says fathers provoke not your children to anger down that you are the head okay you are the head apostle thank you for talking you are not the head to go and uh, become the lion of the tribe of the house you understand what i mean not the tribe of judah or the tribe of your own house you terrorize the place no the bible says husband love your wife as christ loved the church and gave himself for her disregard and disrespect for authority romans 13 verse 1 to 2 you can read it when you go home he said let every soul be subject to higher authority give us verse 2 of that romans 13 and i close with it verse 2 Therefore, whoever resists the authority, resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist, who do what? Will bring judgment on themselves. And this is not a message of condemnation. This is a, this is a truth. I remember my mentor told me one day. He said, the Holy Spirit told him. He said, you see this your wife? He said, yes sir. He said, the day you offend this woman, just know that I will not be happy with you. So don't think it's only the women i'm talking the men too numbers chapter 12 aaron and miriam they were mad at moses they had every human reason to be mad because he was their younger brother but moses represented divine authority in israel and the bible didn't say god cursed them because he was angry with them the bible only said in verse 8 or verse 9 rather and the anger of the lord was kindled against them and as god turned his back against them leprosy came on miriam later on she died to show you that the same anger was still on the same judgment was still on when aaron got to the mountain and took off his priestly clothes death met him there why they disrespected authority we don't see the move of god in the body of christ like we should because we don't understand authority and structure some of us have dishonored the coverings the spiritual coverings god has placed over us some of us have converted them and made them our friends but it says grieve not the holy spirit how many of you want to walk with the holy spirit in truth how many of you want to experience his power to, in your life how many of you want to see him do great and mighty things that has never been seen or heard before then i want to welcome you through this series to a fellowship with the spirit of god next week i'm going to teach you the other side quench not and then i'm going to teach you how to build your fellowship with the holy spirit and we are going to trust him for a mighty visitation in his presence but tonight if god has come to you through his word while you are seated i want you to ask him to search your heart and purge you and rid you of anything that has taken his place anything that has made you to grieve him anything that has made him walk out of your life because of grief some of us will keep doing those things again and again unknown to us can you ask him lord search my heart can you go to him with a repentant and a broken heart tonight it's time for your relationship with him to be restored it's time for your relationship to be restored
is time for your fellowship with him to come into another journey another season as the day answered for the word has so my soul long and I to thee please increase the volume can we stand up as we sing it together as the to the words that you are singing. Oh, you So test for you. You alone say you are my heart. You are my heart's desire. Come a minute from your heart. Sing it with love from your heart. Let him hear it from the depth of your being. You is here. His presence is here. God wants to bring us to a place where we become one with the Spirit and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.
is a very simple song. I give it all. and say oh, 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 I give it all I give it all to you Brothers and sisters Spirit is our advantage. He's everything. He's everything to a believer. He's our life. He was sent by the Father to be with us forever. A believer should not attempt living life without the Holy Spirit, without the help of the Holy Spirit. It will all end up in frustration. An unbeliever should not bother about living because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit and his end will only be destruction. He is the life that Jesus came to give to us. He said, I have come, I am come that they may have life. He is right here in this room. And is bringing us into another level of fellowship with Him. He's bringing us to another level of intimacy with Him. I give it all. I want you to pray a prayer. I'm going to ask us to repeat the prayer after me. And when you have repeated the prayer, I will ask you to be still. There are a few people that the Holy Spirit wants to visit tonight. While I prayed this afternoon, I saw an eruption of the Spirit all over the hall. There are a few people that the Lord is calling to another place. Everybody eyes closed, repeat this after me. Say Holy Spirit. Say it again, Holy Spirit. Say it from the depths of your heart, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to me. Holy Spirit, use me for your glory. Let's say it one more time. Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Holy Spirit, use me for your glory. Now just stop the keyboard. Hands lifted everywhere, eyes closed. Father, as they have said, Reveal yourself again. Give someone a fresh encounter. Don't get distracted. He's coming to everybody. Some may not shout. Some may have sensations all over their body. Some may be caught up into visions and trance. But he will reveal himself to everyone. Holy Spirit, I ask that you truly, as they have said, reveal yourself to them. Pick men and women in this place tonight and use them for your glory. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Now just be still for one minute. The Holy Spirit is encountering a lot of people here right now. All across this hall. Thank you for that visitation, Holy Spirit. From the left to the right, from the front to the back, a fresh encounter. Anoint men that you will use for your glory. That's it. 
That's it. Just close your eyes everywhere. Don't be distracted. Allow only the ushers and the protocol. You have spoken to him. You asked him to reveal himself. You asked him to use you. And here he goes. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. Come like a rushing mighty wind. Reveal yourself to that young man, to that woman, to that mother, to that father. Give them an encounter everywhere across this hall and online. To everyone under the sound of my voice. In your unique way, visit them. Like in the day of Pentecost. Holy Ghost! That's it. Everywhere. Some of you are having all kinds of sensations on your body. Some of you feel fire. Some of you feel a gentle breeze around you. Some of you just feel joy inside of you. For some is anointing them. A fresh encounter with him. Let everyone whose ministry has been dead be brought to life now under your power. Let ministries be activated. Let giftings be activated. Let the angels that bear the anointing for any vessel here, let them walk in this place and release those anointings. Just help them please. I need thee every hour, most precious blood. No tender voice like thine. He's walking here. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every eye I need Oh bless me Holy Spirit I come to I need thee Oh I need thee Every eye I need stand everywhere if you are here and you're not born again you want to give your life and your heart to the Lord or perhaps you are here and you have been convicted by the message maybe you were born again before but you derailed several things happen in your life or maybe you grieve the Holy Spirit and you are sorry for that and you want to rededicate your life Wherever you are, I'll give you one minute to just walk to the front quickly. 
and I'll lead you to pray. You want to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus? Or you want to rededicate your life afresh? You are tired of grieving the Holy Spirit? Or you are tired of backsliding? You want to surrender to Him? You want Him to help you? Wherever you are in 60 seconds, unashamedly, I want you to walk to the front. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot receive the kingdom of God, which is the Holy Spirit in you. Except you surrender to Him. Except you rededicate to Him. While I sing this song, if you are here, you want to surrender to the Lord or you want to rededicate your heart to the Lord, walk to the front very quickly before we close. While I just sing the song. I need thee, oh I need thee Every I need thee Oh help me Holy Spirit I come to Keep singing softly is speaking to you please make your way to the front if god is convicting your heart you can feel a conviction in your heart right now you can feel god speaking to you as i'm making this call don't be ashamed don't hold back surrender to him come to the front you are tired of having one leg in and one leg out you are tired of living for god today and living for the devil tomorrow you are tired of grieving him again and again. You need him in your life. But you have to surrender and rededicate your life. Walk to the front very quickly, very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. Very quickly. Don't hold back as you hear this voice. Don't assume that you are born again. Don't assume that you have surrendered. Don't assume that you have rededicated your life. To Jesus, He is the one that gives the Holy Spirit. Come to Him, and He will make your life brand new. He will give you the Holy Spirit again. Come to Jesus. Come, God is calling you. Come, say, I need you. Oh, I need you. Come, I'm waiting for you. God is calling you. God is calling you. If you still need to join them, please join them while they make the sinner's prayer. For those of you in front, I salute your courage for coming out. Whether this is your first time or you have been convicted by the word of God and you want to rededicate your life afresh, you want to surrender afresh to him. I want you to mean this prayer from your heart. God is about to make your life brand new. Please, no distraction at the back there. In front, those of you in front, say after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today, forgive me my sins. I believe that you died and rose again and I confess you with my mouth as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus name. Now just lift your hands those of you in front, I want to pray for you. Father, I declare that their sins are forgiven. I declare that they are born again. And now I ask that you fill them with your spirit. Let their lives move from glory to glory. There's one of you in front that I see the Holy Spirit breaking a demonic yoke in your life. I just sense the power of God coming on one of you in front. There's a demonic yoke that is going to be broken off your life. Lord, seal them with your spirit. Let their lives never remain the same again. Move them from glory to glory. In Jesus' name.